about giving. When it comes down to this, and when I think about it, I probably should have did this at the very beginning. But I'm ending our giving with just the facts about it. It's going to be the text to talk in the takeaway. Here is the text. It is Exodus 36, 3 through 6. Exodus 36, 3 through 6. The people continued to bring free will offerings morning after morning. And so the people were restrained from bringing more. The people had been bringing their free will offering morning after morning. And it got to the point that they had to be restrained from bringing more. What in the world is going on in this text? Here's what's happening in the text. Moses has received orders from God to build the temple, to build, I'm sorry, the tabernacle. They've not yet made it to the temple. We're in first Kings, second Kings when we get to the temple. But now he is constructing the tabernacle where the Ark of the Covenant will reside, where the presence of the Lord will go with them through the wilderness. As he is constructing the tabernacle, as he is constructing this tent of the meetings in the middle of the wilderness, he sends out a clarion call that we need offerings, we need things, we need money, we need the items necessary to build it. We have the craftsmen that are ready to do it. Now, all we need are the items to do it. He sends the call out to a million and a half people that is a part of the children of Israel in the wilderness. They begin to bring things to the point that they said, don't bring anything else. We have more than enough. Just, just keep what you have. It's just an overabundance. Now, the thing that comes to my mind, what in the world is going on on the inside of them that they would give to the point that somebody had to tell them to stop giving? Think about that. Think about that. Have you ever been in church and they took up the offering and the person taking up the offering said, look, don't more, don't, don't, don't nobody bring anything else. Have you ever been in church and the word is going forth and they start bringing money to the, to the altar? That's what we do at my church when God begins to move and the power of God is in the place and we just begin to freely give. We bring money to the altar, lay it on the altar before God because the instantaneous response that we're getting from God, we don't want, we want to attach something tangible to it. So we bring it to the, to the altar and we lay it there. But I've never been in a situation where they said, stop bringing the money. Just, just hold on to it. What causes people to get to that place that they give so much that their leaders say, you can stop now? It's their love for the house of God, the work of God, and what God is doing in their lives. Now, I want you to put a pin right there. Let me give you three things that I need to share that are just the facts about giving. What we don't understand, and it's part and very important that we grab, when it comes down to giving, there were many types of offerings during the time that uh, the Old Testament is written. One of the offerings is a free will offering. That was the offering that was supposed to come from the heart. That's the type of offering that they're giving in our text this morning. It's a free will offering. It's an offering that comes from my heart. Now, that tells us where their heart was with respect to the house of God, the work of God, and where God was in their hearts. Now, I remember when I was growing up, the young guy just started preaching, got my life to Christ at 12, started preaching at 13. And when I got 16, I would drive from church to church when they were asked to preach. And, um, and then they would give an offering. Now, some of you know what I'm talking about. They would give a love offering after the man God, man of God preached. And it would be in a little small brown envelope. How many of you remember that? Little small brown envelope. Now, my father, who was a bishop as well, he, he taught me never, it was impolite to take that and open that envelope in front of everybody or whatever. Wait till you got home. You know, and so I can remember times when I would go preach as a young preacher and everything, and they would give me that little brown envelope. 
that brown envelope sealed it. The deacon handed it to me. Man, I couldn't wait to get home to see just how much they love what God was doing. Well, sometimes they love God a lot and sometimes they didn't love God as much. Here is the point that I'm making. What is the free will offering disposition of your heart? Because that is one of the things that they did. The second type of offering was a sacrificial offering. Now, I want you to remember something. In the Old Testament, offerings were, were animals. They were doves. Uh, they were sheep. Uh, they were ox. Uh, they were all types of animals uh, that they would then sacrifice because they needed the blood. They were also grains, also types of grains. That were the type of offerings that they would bring, but it was a sacrifice. Now, what is a sacrifice when it comes down to us? Here is just the facts. If you give an offering, if you give, and it did not cause you to go without that's not a sacrifice. But the moment you make the sacrifice that you go without to then give to what God is doing, expect God to pour out a blessing on your life that you don't have room enough to receive. How do I get more from God? I give more. And, it, and it's a point in which I give up something. Now, be very mindful that I am mindful of the thing I give up. Whether, okay, this this month, I'm not going to not going to get my due this month, I'm not going to get my manicure this month. I'm not going to buy that ex that car that I've been wanting, uh, bros. I I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to get that game uh, that I'm going to play, uh, whatever the case may be. It's not just about women. Men do the same thing. I'm going to give up something. No God is going to replace it even more. Here's the third type of offering. Tithing. I've already talked about it, but I want to try to put a period at the end, an exclamation point at the end of the sentence. Remember, tithing does not belong to you. It's holy. That's why when you touch it, your finances fall dead, just like when they touched the Ark of the Covenant and when they were moving it and it moved, they tried to hold on to it, said, no, don't even touch it. So the tithing. In many respects, tithing is not giving, it's returning. It's returning because it never belonged to you. Now, when Malachi says, will you rob God? He is literally saying he's looking right at you. There's a difference between stealing and robbing. Robbing is I'm watching you. I'm looking at you. Stick me up. Stealing is I don't see you. Here is God saying, I see you not returning to me what I have given to you. How is it then that you want me to bless you? So let's put a period at the end of this sentence and this paragraph that we've had for the past two weeks about God restoring our wealth. He restores our wealth as we restore our love for him. The more love I have for God, the more I'm going to give to him. Final story, and then I'll close. When I was living in Memphis, Tennessee, stationed there going to the University of Memphis, First Lady and I and our kids. And uh, we went to Bountiful Blessings, the late Bishop G.E. Patterson's church. It was before the church you now see on television. It was in the second church. It was the first church and it was second church. And now you see the third one that you see on television. Well, here's the point. We were there when they decided that they were going to build that church. I remember it so well that uh, it just overcame me that I had the privilege of being in that congregation at that time, that we went to our RRA, our pension, our life savings. We pulled it out and gave it to the man of God. Why? It was the disposition of our heart. We cannot have enough to give. I'll never, ever forget it. And God has continually replaced that over and over again. You want to talk about restoring your wealth? Restore and build up the disposition of your heart and love for God. And watch, there are going to be free will offering, sacrificial offering, and returning the tithe with no problem. And God will bless. What's your takeaway this morning? It's an old song. How deep is your love? How deep is your love? 
All I got to do is look at what you give me. The Lord be with you today. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. I certainly hope that you will have a great weekend. Please join me, New Life 2, 1, and uh, Facebook Live, 930 Central Standard Time, where I'm going to be putting a period on the end of restoring your wealth in the word as well. And there's a great surprise that I'll have during our worship service. Please join me then. Have a great weekend. God bless you. Share the matter. Bye now.